This is an example of a matrix upload using the Atlas Find and Replace functionality. What you have here uh, is a worksheet that contains some basic forecast information. Customer, some start and end dates. We've got an item number, some item configurations, and 12 columns broken out from left to right, July through uh, June. So from July 2012 to June 2013. So what we're going to do is change the mode from standard to designer. We are already in designer mode. We'll then choose the find and replace functionality. Uh, recall that the find and replace will uh, delete an existing uh, record and add a new one. We're going to delete forecasts and add new ones. So we're going to tick the demand forecast table to build a new template. We'll open the filters tab and we're going to right click on the customer account, choose cust account ID, name range. We're going to click on date and enter equal delete date because we have a named range already in our worksheet with that same name and it happens to be over here in a hidden column it's right here okay we are going to enter a model and in, in the filter of model number 100 we have that data set up in AX moving to the find and replace tab to finish configuring, we want to select the fields button. So we click the find and replace demand forecast node, click the fields button, and we're going to untick all of the fields that defaulted so that we can reselect the ones that we are interested in. We are interested in model number item number, date, quantity, and customer account. So we'll click apply. We'll then expand the available fields list to go after some more fields. We want comments and we want dimension number. There's dimension number. We'll click apply, add those in. Now we want to join the inventory dimensions table to the demand forecast table so we click, click the green plus to do that once we've done that we want to include site warehouse configuration dimension number size and color to our template click apply adds those in there so we will click OK that's how our template looks at this point. Now we need to adjust field properties. What we're going to do here with quantity is right click, go to properties, choose from the field type number of columns and when we do that these additional fields down here become active we want to set the date field to date and we want to indicate that a date field represents one month. Click apply. We want to then notice that the quantity field has been promoted to the number of columns node. We want to do the same thing with date so we'll right click date, go to properties. From the field type pull down We'll choose number of columns. The number of columns is once again 12. I think I made a typo in that last entry, but I'll go back and fix it. The date field is date. It represents one month. I'll click apply. And I want to make sure that my quantity field is set to number of columns 12. Yes, it is. So we're saying here that both the quantity 
and the date are going to be sensitive to the 12 columns July through June and the mapping has to occur for all 12 of those columns for both the quantity and the date. So on we go. We need to go back up into our task pane and start configuring the individual fields further. We'll start with item number, right click it and choose the name range default, customer account, name range default, comments, name range default. I'm right clicking and choosing the defaults. Uh, color is name range default, configuration, name range default, site, same thing, size, same thing, warehouse, same thing. At this intermediate point, notice over in our name box on the left hand side, these named ranges have already been set up and mapped to the document. So that's been done for you, but in the real world, world you'll need to do that. Okay, where are we at? Uh, we need to go back and revisit some of the fields we haven't finished yet. The model number, if we right click it and set its properties, we will want to set this forecast model to 100, the one we're interested in. We're then going to move to the item field and we're going to choose a X++ method init from invent table. As you may have learned in other presentations What's, what that's going to do is execute some code during the upload which will initialize some additional fields in the demand forecast table which are not included in this template. If you'd like to know further which fields are going to be affected, you can go into AX, look up this method in it from invent table and read the code it will tell you. And we want to do something similar to the customer account field we want to choose an X++ method init from cus table. There it is. And similar updating will occur to from the cus table to the demand forecast table as I just described with the item. Okay, now we want to go to the dimension number field which is in the demand forecast table and it's this one we're going to choose from the field type a field type of child field list we're then going to select the magnifying glass and choose invent dim ID what we've done is we've specified in this template that during the upload the dimensions that are going to be relative to the item in the sheet that we're uploading are going to be found in the invent dim table so we're saying the demand forecast table is got it has got a dimension number we're saying go to the child field list which is the invent dim table to find the dimensions that are going to be uploaded and that and those will be site size warehouse configuration and color all right our next step is to configure those individual dimensions that I just mentioned by right clicking them and setting them all to unique so it's a pretty easy process color is unique configuration is unique we don't need to set the dimension number value in the inventory dimensions table that will occur, that will get set automatically during the upload. Site is unique, size is unique, warehouse is unique. We'll click apply, click the red X, and it looks like we are in pretty good shape here. What do we want to do next? We want to make sure that we click insert. that will insert our template into the document so that when we go back to the data sources tab 
and click the function find and replace to reflect refresh the task pane we'll see that that we now have a template called demand forecast which is embedded in this document okay so what are we going to do next all right because of the fact that we're going to be transposing 12 columns into rows in AX what we need to do is something a little bit out of the ordinary works fine but you may not be used to doing this we need to switch to standard mode which typically is not used to do design work but in this case it will be make sure that the that the demand forecast template is selected and go to the find and replace tab and if we scroll down to the bottom of this template we can see that we've got 12 quantities broken out and 12 dates broken out that's because we specified that the date and quantity fields were field type number of columns now to finish the configuration we've got to do a little bit of entry here but notice over in my spreadsheet we've got a name range for January that's a month and we've got the quantity for that month so that's the quantity for January so we've got Jan Jan quantity July July quantity etc etc for all the months of the year so what needs to happen at this point is a little bit of data entry here so quantity uh, let me see in the quantity fields we'll start in the date fields and go back to the quantity fields just for the heck of it okay the first date column is going to be equal JUL okay next one is equal AUG equal SEP equal OCT equal NOV equal DC and hopefully you get the idea here oops Okay, we've now got the named ranges established in the criteria for the dates and we need to go back up to the quantities and do the same thing for the quantities. The quantities, if I recall, have a month in front of them with QTY after, after yes. So the first one would be equal JUL, JUL, QTY. Make sure that my caps are the same it may not matter but I want to be sure all right the next one is June oh, excuse me August so August March, March. Okay, we've just mapped 
24 fields, essentially 12 instances of quantity and 12 of date. The next thing we need to do before we do the upload is something you typically don't do because you typically don't enter information into a template when you're in standard mode. But we want to click the confirmation tab and be absolutely sure that we click the save button. This is a button that isn't used too often, but I'm going to click it and I get a message saying the changes that I made to the criteria, those 24 entries that I just made, were successfully saved in the document. So they've been inserted in the document. All right. Next thing we're going to do is um, I didn't tell you, but we actually have embedded in this document a structured list, a structured summary report, I should say. And it is down here, I believe. There it is right there. It's got a filter of customer account, date, model, and it returns all these various fields that you can see that we're interested in. So what we're going to do is put in customer 2202, hit enter to refresh this query, the structured list query, and lo and behold, we've just pulled out of AX. The current forecast for that customer consists of this item number in these various configurations for these quantities, but it has not, the forecast has not been spread out through the year from June 12 to uh, July 12 to June 2013. So the next to last thing we're going to do before we actually complete this upload is we're going to enter some forecast information in each column. Starting in July, I will type in number 2 and copy it all the way through the year. Okay, I will put in number 1, that's quantity of 1, copy it through the year, put in a quantity of 3, copy it through the year, and finally a quantity of 4, copy it to each month in the year. Okay, looks like we're ready to go, ready to perform this upload. So to do this, we want to change to standard mode. Choose the find and replace function. Make sure that our forecast uh, template is ticked. Click confirmation and click upload. We've successfully added 48 records and deleted four. So we've deleted these four here, replace them with monthly information. We go back into AX, click on the customer 2202, click forecast. We should see all of our forecast quantities, all 48 of those, as we, as we were uh, attempting to do. Looks like it was all successful. So that completes a quick demonstration of doing a matrix upload using the Atlas find and replace function.